Hi students, I'll try in this educational video to technologically introduce the principal rules that permit to size the thickness of the main shell of a pressure vessel subjected to internal pressure based on the American Calculation Code ASME, of course, as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. First of all, it should be remembered that uh, in industrial applications, we have uh, cylindrical pressure vessels, as it is depicted by this schematic diagram and this real picture. And uh, this cylindrical uh, pressure vessel is characterized by its cylindrical uh, main shell, as it is highlighted in red. We have also spherical uh, pressure vessel, uh, as it is depicted by uh, the schematic uh, diagram at the right and uh, the real uh, picture at the bottom right. And of course, this spherical, uh, share, this spherical pressure vessel is uh, characterized by uh, obviously its uh, spherical main shell as it is highlighted in red. In this educational video, I, we will try to explain how to size the thickness of uh, the cylindrical and the spherical main shells when the pressure vessel is uh, subjected to internal pressure based on uh, the American Calculation Code ASME to say American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Now it's important to note that uh, welded joint in pressure vessels uh, presents four categories category A, category B, category C, and category D. Based on the figure that you see in the slide, uh, the category A includes uh, longitudinal and, and spiral uh, welded joints within the main shell, within the transitions in diameter within uh, the nozzles and within the communicating chambers. Uh, category A includes also uh, any uh, welded joint in uh, formed heads or flat heads. It's to note also that uh, category A includes a circumferential welded joint between hemispherical heads and the other components of the pressure vessels, such as the main shell. It's important to note also that any welded joint in a sphere or a spherical shell is considered as category A. Now, the category B includes the circumferential welded joint within the main shell, within the nozzles, and within the communicating chambers. The category B includes also the circumferential welded joint between the transition in diameter and, uh, uh, and the cylinders of the pressure vessel uh, at uh, either the small and uh, large end. Category B includes, uh, in addition, uh, the circumferential weld joint connecting a non-hemispherical uh, formed head to uh, the other components of uh, the pressure vessel, such as the main shell. Now, category C includes any welded joint connecting flanges to the main shell, to the transition in diameter, to the formed head, to the nozzles, and uh, to the communicating chambers. Finally, category D includes any welded joint uh, connecting uh, nozzles or communicating chambers to the main cylindrical or spherical uh, shells or uh, to the transition in diameter or to the format heads. Uh, and uh, you can find uh, other auxiliary details in the document ASME section uh, 8 division 1 UW-23. Now we move to the sizing of the cylindrical shells uh, when the stress state is dominated by the circumferential stress, the hoop stress. So the welded joints uh, should be longitudinals 
and uh, at this case and based on the ASME section A division 1 UG-27 uh, the thickness of the cylindrical shell is obtained by the formula that you see now in this slide with P the internal design pressure, R is the shell inside radius, S is the maximum allowable stress and E is the joint efficiency. Pay attention, this formula is valid only when the thickness uh, does not uh, exceed uh, the half of the internal uh, radius of the shell and uh, also the pressure does not exceed 0 0.385 uh, the maximum allowable stress multiplied by the joint efficiency. Now for the case of cylindrical shell with a stress state dominated by longitudinal stress, so in this case the welded joints should be circumferential uh, and based on the ASME section A division 1 UG-27, the thickness of the cylindrical shell should be uh, no less than uh, than the value obtained by the formula that you see now in this slide. Of course, P, R, S, and E are defined as I explained before for the case of cylindrical shells dominated by circumferential stress. And uh, pay attention, uh, this uh, formula is valid uh, only when the thickness does not exceed the half of the internal uh, radius of the shell and also the pressure does not exceed 1.25 the maximum allowable stress multiplied by the joint efficiency E. Now for the case of spherical shells the thickness should be obtained based on the ASME section A division 1 UG-27 using this formula and as I said before P, R, S and E are defined as I explained for the the case of cylindrical shells pay attention here this formula is valid only when the thickness uh, does not exceed 0 0.356 multiplied by the internal radius of the shell r and uh, the design pressure p should uh, does not exceed 0 0.665 multiplied by the maximum allowable stress s multiplied by the joint efficiency e now let's explain how to determine the maximum allowable stress S. In fact, based on the ASME section 2, part D, sub part 1, table 1A, we have, let's say, two sub tables 1A. The first sub table uh, provides several line numbers, and each line number indicates a certain material. For example here the line number uh, 6 indicates uh, a carbon steel uh, SA-285 provided in the form of a plate. We take for example this line number 6 and we move to the second subtables and you can notice that uh, in this line number number 6 uh, like the other lines we have uh, some or several maximum allowable stresses depending on the surface temperature and uh, for example if we have a surface temperature around 150 degrees celsius we obtain a maximum allowable stress in the order of 88.9 megapascal that's how we can determine the maximum allowable stress based on the ASME section 2 part D sub part 1 table 1a. Now let's explain how to determine the joint efficiency E based on the ASME section A division 1 table UW-12. This is the table UW-12 and you can notice that based on the well joint description we we can take an, an idea about the limitations and about the allowed uh, joint category and uh, especially we can determine the joint efficiency e based on the degree of radiographic examination of the well joint full spot or known for example when we have a butt joints carried out by double welding 
there are no limitations and all the joint categories are uh, allowed a b c and d and uh, for example when we are in the case of a spot radiographic examination of the weld joint the joint efficiency e will be 0 0.85 another example for example when we have uh, single fall fillet lap joints without plug welds uh, only the joint category A and B are uh, allowed. You can notice also that uh, the full and the spot radiographic examination of the well joint are not applicable. And uh, the case, the remaining case is a known radiographic examination. And in this case, we have a joint efficiency 0.45. That's all for this educational video. Please, if you have any remarks or suggestions, mention it in the comments. Thank you very much.